The Pythagorean theorem. All right, this is our first lesson on it. The Pythagorean theorem is actually about right triangles. And what we're going to do here is I want you to be able to, to look at just this plain and simple right triangle, and I'm going to have you work with the calculations that one has to do when you use the Pythagorean theorem. There are two situations that you run into, and then uh, you'll be working with both of those. Uh, this will be a book assignment, so you will want a textbook uh, to do your assignment. Be sure to grab one. All right, to get started, just to kind of explain to you how it works. There was a Greek mathematician named Pythagoras, and he discovered that with a right triangle, what I have drawn here is a right triangle, and what he discovered, and let me put my right angle in here for you. Here's the right angle. All right, and what he discovered was that if you take the two smaller sides of a right triangle, in other words, the two sides that make up the right angle, and he said, if you take and draw a square off of each side. So I'm drawing a square. The length of this side I see as three, three uh, squares, so it's three spaces. So it has a length of three. So I'm drawing a square off of this that's three by three. So I have a square with a length of three by three. Okay, that's this is one of the things he noticed. Then he noticed that he would need to draw a square off of here. Now, look, if I count the spaces for the side length of the right triangle, I'll notice that, the, that these, there are four spaces. So I've drawn a, a, a square here that is four by four. And what he did is he calculated the areas of these squares. Well, three times three, because the area of a square is length times width. So if I do three times three, the area is, is going to equal three times three. So that area equals nine square units. And the area of this four by four, he said, well, the area then of that, if I do length times width, is four times four, and that equals 16. And what Pythagoras did next was he drew a square off this side. And what he found was quite interesting. He found that if he drew a square, that whoops, if he drew a square off of this long side, that was each side of the square was the same length as the long side. So he probably measured it out there and drew that square out there. And I'll try to get this somewhat close. A little hard to do. I don't have an exact measurement tool. But to give you the idea. And what he found was that if you take the area of the square of the little side, the area of the square of the other side that makes up the right angle, added them together, it equaled the area of the square off the long side. So what he did was this. He said that if I take and do the area of the first square and add that together, so I have 9 plus 16, that's going to equal the area of the long side. Now, actually, since there are three sides of a triangle, they're always labeled A, B, and this would be side C. So then he said that that equaled C squared. And what he did is added 9 plus 16 together and got 25, and that equals c squared. Well, if I want to figure out what number times itself equals an answer, we do the square root. So Pythagoras did the square root of 25. And he said the square root of 25 is going to equal the side length that I'm looking for, and we know the square root of 25 to be, to be 5. And so what he said is this side length here is actually going to be 5. So this triangle would have the side lengths of 3, 4, and 5. And so the area of the square up here would be 25. And this is this is the theorem he put together, and it has been proven. It's used quite a bit outside of school, especially in, in construction. Um, so let's take a look at how we calculate with this. That's just the basic premise of how it works. I'm not going to go any further with that. But let's take a look at how we calculate. Here's a right triangle. I have two sides here. A 5 and an 8. Okay, so if the sides of the right angle are both given to us, well, we are missing side C. So this is the longest side. Now, each of these has a name, okay? The short sides, the two shorter sides that make up the right angle, they are called legs. This is a leg, and this is called a leg. They always use for one leg, the shorter leg is always A. The longer leg is B. 
And then, as I said, the third side, we put a letter C. It's the third side of the uh, triangle. It has a big long name. It's called the hypotenuse. And you can see how I'm spelling this here. Hypotenuse. And the hypotenuse is always letter C. So how do we calculate? Well, the Pythagorean theorem says this, that you have the square of the shortest side plus the square of the second shortest side. So the square of one leg plus the square of the second leg will equal the longest side, the hypotenuse squared. And we fill into a formula. So I have 5 squared plus 8 squared equals c squared. It's very nice when I have been given both of the legs of the triangle. Works out very quickly. I can do 5 squared. 5 times 5 is 25. 8 times 8, that's 64. And that equals c squared. 25 plus 64 gives me 89. Ooh, that's not a perfect square. That doesn't work out very nicely like my first example. So what do we do? Well, the first thing we do is we say, all right, it is, if how do I finish out for C? I'm still going to, as you showed you up here, you'll still do a square root. I still will do the square root of 89 equals C. This is an exact answer. We consider this to be exact. And the reason it's considered exact is the square root of 89 is really an irrational number. If I did it on the calculator, I would get a decimal that goes on and on and on forever. And let me show you that real quickly. If I take the calculator and I want to do the square root, let's see, let's get this easier calculator, the standard calculator. Does it have a square root button? Yes, it does. So if I take the square root of 89, I type in 89 and I do my square root. Notice the decimal goes on and on and on and on and on and there's no repeating pattern. Well, that's, your, that's an irrational number. So we would say if we leave it in what's called radical form, because I can still see the square root symbol, then we have an exact answer. We will then actually put down an answer that's a rounded answer. And what we'll do is we'll round this to the nearest hundredth. So that means I have to have two decimal places in my answer. So my answer will be, I do the square root of 89 to get 9. 0.43. And the reason I'm using 0.43 is I actually have another 3 behind the 43. So I'll just leave it as 9.43. And that equals, and I can't use that symbol because that's not an exact symbol. I need the squiggly symbol or the about symbol for this. So then I'm going to make something look like this, this little guy right here. It's two wavy lines, just like that, that we say that 9.43 is about the length of C. And that's it. So when I have a leg that I'm being given both legs and the hypotenuse is missing, my formula is a squared plus b squared equals c squared. 25 squared plus 8 squared, I fill in the legs, gives me c squared. I square both numbers, added them together, and I did the square root. And this is how Pythagoras discovered this. This is what he was doing. Okay, the, uh, this is situation one. You have the hypotenuse missing. Situation two is you have a leg missing. You've been given the long side, the hypotenuse. The hypotenuse is always directly across from the right angle. In fact, the point of the right angle symbol always points, always points at the hypotenuse. The hypotenuse is the, always the longest side in a right triangle. When you have the lengths of the two shorter sides, you have to, what we look at is we have to have two numbers that are less than the hypotenuse. And that's what we're looking for. If I get a number over here for this leg that's bigger than 10, I have a wrong answer. I want a number that's going to be smaller than 10. So how do we fill in on this when we have a leg missing? Well, this looks like it's a shorter leg, so I'm going to use A there. That's A. This is going to be B, and the hypotenuse is always C. So I have my formula A squared plus B squared equals C squared. So here we go. How do we fill it in? I don't have the shortest side, so I'm going to write a squared. I do have the other sh other shorter, so the middle side, the middle side length, and that's a 7, so I'm going to say plus 7 squared equals c squared. And lastly, whoops, I do have c, don't I? So I can erase the c squared that I put there, and I have 10. So I'm going to use then 10 squared at the end. Now what do I do? 
I'm just going to square the numbers. I'm going to leave the a squared there. I'm just not going to work with it right now. I don't know what it is, so I just copy it. Plus 49 equals 100 because 10 squared is 100. How do I solve for a letter that's sitting here? Yes, I work backwards now. Subtract 49 from both sides. Minus 49. And I'm going to draw my line. And here's my river. I know some of you like to draw in the river. So then I have a squared. Positive, plus 49 minus 49. That goes away. That cancels. Equals, a squared equals 100 minus 49. That's 51. And 51 is not a perfect square, is it? So that means I'll have, again, an answer that's not an exact answer. The exact answer would be that if I do the square root of both sides, I get a equals the square root of 51. And again, this is the exact answer. So if you're told it should be in radical form, that means this is what we're after, an exact answer. If it doesn't go out to be a perfect square, this is exact. So then now I want to do the square root of 51. So I'll say a is about, and I'm going to take my calculator. Where'd you go? There it is, 51. And on the, I will find the square root on the calculator that I have. And this one's a 7.14 and a 1. So a is about 7.14. 1, 4 units. And then I will stop here. So one or two situations that you run into. The first one I showed you, we have the longest side of the triangle missing. That's C, the hypotenuse. It's calculated very straightforward, as you see in this example. And then here we have this example here where a leg is missing. And either A will be there or B will be there. You'll leave one of the letters. And this one I had A. You could have one with B. It's worked the exact same way. So what do I want you to do to get used to calculating with this? I want you to do some problems from your book from page 552 right here. Page 552, numbers 22 to 28, 36 and 37. Eight problems to do. Please let me know if there's anything, or nine problems, I'm sorry. And please let me know if there's anything that I can help you with. Check with a neighbor. And always, 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 you need to remember to do this. Check your answers. And check them with my textbook. Make sure that you're doing it correctly. Get that feedback that you need so you can see if you're doing things right or wrong, and then I can help you. Then turn it into Mr. Olenberg. All right, thanks. I know the video got a little long. Uh, please make sure that you do those no nine problems and turn them in.